we'll be solving this problem called sum of three values. So we are given an array of n integers and our task is to find three values at distinct positions whose sum is x. So the first line of our input contains two integers n and x and n is only as large as 5000 so we can afford to have a quadratic complexity and x and the ai's can be as large as a billion so in this example if we take 2 5 and 1 we will get a sum of 8 that's why we printed the indices 1 3 and 4 so let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution so the first idea that comes to mind is to start with a naive approach and that would be to try all possible combinations and that would look something like this so we will have uh, three nested for loops to try for all possible increasing combinations of i j and k and each time we're gonna check if a i plus a j plus a k is equal to x and if that's the case we're just gonna print i plus one j plus one and k plus one and return and if that does not happen, at the end we'll just print impossible because in the problem we have to print impossible if we can't find the three indices. But as we can see here, the complexity here is all of n cubed because we have three nested loops. And since n can be as large as five times 10 to the third, then n cubed will be as large as 125 times 10 to the ninth, which is way larger than our threshold of 10 to the seven, 10 to the eight. So we need to reduce our complexity. And to do that, let's just uh, work out our example here and see if we can get any insight. So let's say that this is i and this is j. So my sum so far is seven and I need a position k whose value is 10 so I can get uh, a sum that is equal to my target 17. But as we can see here, all these values are smaller than or equal to 9. So the max here is 9. So right off the bat, I know that I cannot achieve my target because no matter what other value I pick, it's going to be smaller than 17. So in order to have this information handy each time, it would be a good idea to just sort my array so that when I pick my i and j, I can just check the last element of the array and if this sum is smaller than my target there is no point in checking any other value of k so I'll just increase my j. So if I sort my array I'll get the following I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So let's redo our example this is i and this is j the sum so far is 3 and i would require 14. so this won't work i will have to move on j this won't work here as well because the sum will be only 4. so i i will keep moving until i get to this position and now my sum is 8 plus my maximum which is 9 i'll get a sum that is equal to 17 and thus these three positions will form a valid answer now let's look at a, another example where the sum like this will be too large so this is my example i'm gonna start again with i and j at the beginning and now my target is 10 so the sum of these two values is 3 and 3 plus 9 is larger than uh, 10 so i have to keep moving k in this direction to get a valid answer and we're gonna notice that something very interesting happens with this k when we increment j so for now i'm gonna keep moving k as long as this sum the sum of i plus j plus k is larger than 10 so 1 plus 2 plus 9 is 12 so larger than 10 so i'm gonna move k here and now the sum is 11 still larger than k and I will have to bring my k here and now I'm gonna break and my sum here is equal to 8 so it's smaller than or equal to 10 and it's not equal to 10 this means that I have to increment j because we, if I fix i and j at this position there will be no k value that uh, adds up to 10 because as we saw these were larger than 10 
and the first value that is smaller than or equal to 10 is strictly smaller than 10 so there will be no match in k in this interval as well so i the, my only choice now is to increment j so j moves here so now you would think that i will have to reinitialize k to the end of the array again but in fact i don't remember what we said about these values these values when added to 3 were larger than 10 now my initial value the sum of i and j is 4 so it is evident that if I add this sum to any of the previous values, they're still going to be larger than k. So I don't need to recheck for these values. And this is the way I'm going to use to get rid of this for loop. So I will not keep reinitializing k each time. k will only keep moving in this direction. So this means that this for loop will not exist anymore. And this will help me reduce my complexity to all of n squared. And this is similar to the technique of two pointers, but here I will only have a one pointer that moves in only one direction in addition to a two nested for loop. So now my sum is one plus three, which is four, and I'm gonna start right from here. So four plus five is already smaller than or equal than 10, but it is strictly less than 10. So this won't match again, so I will not decrement my k, it will remain here, and what I will do is just increase my j here. So my sum now is 1 plus 4, 5 plus k is equal to 10 again, and this sum is less than or equal than 10, so I don't have to decrease my k, and I found myself an answer, so these positions match. So to summarize, I'm just gonna initialize k to the end of the array and keep moving i and j using these two for loops. And at each position, I will keep decrementing my k as long as it is strictly larger than my target. When it becomes less than or equal than my target, I will stop and I will check for two things. First, I will check that this sum is equal to my target and that j has to be strictly less than k because remember my my indices have to be distinct so i will check for j less strictly less than k and the sum a i plus a j plus a k is equal to k to x and if that's the case i will just print my answer so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and check out my code so this is my program i'll start by reading n and x then I will declare a vector of pair of ints, uh, actually a vector of pair of long long and ints, and I'm using long long here because uh, the sum might overflow and I will need to count the sum of three positions so it might be larger than max of int. And I, ha I have a pair here to, to store the index, the initial index of the value because remember we're gonna sort our array and if we sort it we might lose the order. So I'm gonna store my initial index as well. Now I'm gonna read my values and set the index to i plus one. Then I'm gonna sort my array. Then I'm gonna have my first for loop for i. And I will calculate the new sum I will need to reach if I fix i and that would be x minus a i dot first. Then I'm gonna have my second for loop for j and j will start from i plus one and it will be strictly less than k to, so that the indices remain distinct. And I'm gonna initialize k to the end of the array uh, to n minus one, and I will proceed. So as long as the sum of aj plus ak is strictly greater than what I need, I will have to keep decrementing k. And when I'm done decrementing k, I will check for the two conditions we mentioned. I'll check that j is strictly less than k and that the sum is equal to x2, x2 being the value I needed after fixing i. And if that's the case, I'm gonna print the three indices and return. And otherwise, I'll just print impossible at the end. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.